bass players. Today we're going to be working on page 28 in Essential Elements, book two. And on this page and the next page, we're going to be working on some minor scales. I love minor scales. They've got a certain darkness to them and a depth to them that um, adds a whole new color to your music. If you've been playing songs in major keys, um, you're going to find that the minor key songs have a, a whole different color to them. Um, so we're going to start out by learning the scale. Now, um, just so you know, there are three different types of minor scales. And I'm going to demonstrate all of them, but on this page we're just going to do the natural minor scale. But then um, soon when we add minor scale to our normal scale practice routine, we will be doing the, a different form, the melodic form of the minor scale. Um, so uh, just to clarify the, the difference, um, let's first listen to a D major scale. Um, D major is two sharps in the key signature, so F sharp and C sharp sounds like this. key signature is one flat so it shares the same key signature as F major and so um, if you compare that to D major uh, you will not have the F sharp it'll be F natural you will not have C sharp it'll be C natural and you will have B flat which is second finger on the the G string so you're still playing it in first position um, but um, using the second finger and um, instead of the fourth finger and then here in third position you will not use the second finger, you'll use the first finger for that C natural. So D minor scale, this is what is written in page 125, which we'll play with the recording in a moment, but it sounds like this. Now, another form of the minor scale that we don't often practice as string players, but there are some instruments, um, some of the band instruments do this one a little bit more frequently, the harmonic minor scale. And with the harmonic minor scale, you keep the notes of the D natural minor scale, except the C natural is switched back into C sharp. So you raise it a half a step. So you have a B flat uh, down here, and then you leap to the C nat or the, to the C sharp. And that's a step and a half interval, so it's greater than a whole step, which gives it a little bit of an exotic sound. Altogether, it sounds like this, harmonic minor. Now, that's an appealing sounding scale, but it is a little bit challenging to play in tune on a string instruments um, just because of that wide leap, um, especially for the upper strings when they're used to playing half steps or whole steps between the two fingers. Um, that playing a step and a half between two fingers is it's a little trickier to get in tune and hard to play fast in tune. So what we do as string players is we play the melodic minor scale and the melodic minor scale, um, it always does have that F natural, which is different than than D major. However, when you go up the scale, you will, um, instead of playing B flat, you'll play B natural, fourth finger. Instead of playing C natural, you will play a C sharp, um, second finger. Um, so we're keeping that C sharp that we added for harmonic minor, but also adding a B natural to kind of smooth out that, um, that extent, the, the step and a half interval, which would be called an augmented second. Uh, we do that only going up the scale. So going down the scale, the fingering is going to be different and you are going to do the same as natural minor, so C natural, B flat. Okay, so melodic minor sounds like this. Now eventually we will be moving on to practicing that. Um, it is a little bit tricky because it often, especially for bass, will have a different fingering going up and going down, um, but um, so you'll have to learn your ascending fingering and then learn a different fingering for descending. But um, it is the one that is most useful for string music and it um, has the combinations that you're most likely to find in your music. So once you get used to it, um, you'll be able to do just fine. However, we're not getting to that yet. Uh, today we're just going to do the D natural minor scale as, as written in exercise 125. And let's go ahead and play that together. Oh, 
Okay, next one is kind of a special one for the bass because this is a theme from the uh, beginning of the third movement of Mahler's first symphony. Uh, why it's special for the bass is because this is one of the famous bass solos from the symphonic literature. If you listen to the third movement of Mahler's first symphony, um, it actually starts out with a solo bass. So one bass player playing this melody. And it is one of the most iconic and beautiful moments in music. So the, the theme is Frere Jaca. You probably maybe played that in D major um, in book one of Essential Elements. Well, here it is in a minor key, and that's how Mahler conceived it was in a minor key. So it's actually a French song, um, but Mahler, a German composer, put it into a minor key, and he used it very prominently in the movement of the symphony, and he put it in a round. So it's a four-part round. Um, I'm going to play it one time um, with just... Um, just the melody and the accompaniment and then we'll go ahead and do it in a round with the other instruments of the orchestra and uh, when we do it in a round you're welcome to join any part of the round so here we go first time through uh, Mahler theme and notice there is a repeat we're gonna play it twice is called Shalom Shavram and um, this one is a Hebrew folk song and it is also meant to be played as a round. This one is a two-part round though so we don't have uh, four different entrances just two different entrances for this one. Let's go ahead and we're going to do it again the first time um, with just the bass part um, alone and, uh, and the accompaniment and then we will do it in a round. Um, let's look at those fingerings. Notice how in the third measure you go up for the D and um, third position. Um, that is followed by a C natural. And then A and um, D string. Get used to playing that A um, in, uh, in the, on the D string because that fingering is used really quite often. So just be watching your fingering. And um, if it's asking you to play a note with a finger, a different fingering than you're used to playing it, you might be in a different position. Um, with the fingerings, the numbers, the normal Arabic numerals above the note tells you what finger to use. So usually first, second, or fourth. And then once you get up into this range, you will use your third finger. Uh, but usually first, second, and fourth uh, down here. And then the Roman numerals underneath the notes tell you what position 
you are in. So uh, the Roman numeral three means you're up here, third position. Roman numeral one is down here. And then one half cannot be, um, cannot be portrayed as a Roman numeral. So you would just have a fraction for half position. Um, let's go ahead and play 127, Shalom Shavrim. hear that one in a round. The Snake Charmer. This is one of my favorite songs in the book. It's really fun to play. Uh, you want to use a really nice, smooth, connected bow stroke for this one. So. Um... <laughs> some flexibility into the hand and use nice smooth connected bow strokes but make sure that you are putting enough of a bite with your index finger that you really do get the string uh, changing direction on each bow stroke. Here we go, the snake charmer. enjoy playing these songs in D minor and on the next page we will be learning a new key G minor so you can look forward to that and we have a couple of Israeli uh, folk songs on the next page that are really really beautiful so good luck and happy practicing <laughs>